Now we're going to do some practice recognizing the different types of radioactive um, or the different types of nuclear reactions. We can take a look at these reactions that we have listed on the left side of the board and we can see based on what we have in our products to determine what type of reaction has occurred. So first you have to remember your your um, particles. Remember we've got remember we've got our beta particles. We've got our positrons. We've got our we've got neutrons. We've got protons. And we've got alpha particles. And each of these can be written in either of these directions. So if you know your particle, you look in the products of your equation, you could determine what type of uh, reaction has occurred. So let's take a look at number one. Number one, notice that we have potassium, potassium 42, and we end up with a something, and calcium 42. Well, we notice that this particle is, is in the products, and if we take a look and we do our memorization, we remember that this is a, has a negative charge, so this is beta decay. And decay is a word that helps us to know that this particle is a product. Taking a look at number two, notice that we've got oxygen 15 that is converted to nitrogen 15, and we have another particle. So how do you know you have a particle? Most times it doesn't have an actual symbol from your periodic table. It looks like something else. It's an E or an N or something like that. So we've got this particle on the end. It's got a positive one charge. It looks something like an electron. It's not an electron, um, but it is actually what? A positron. So this is positron emission, which is just another fancy word for decay. All right, let's take a look at number three. We've got uranium-235 that uh, is being converted to thorium-231. And we also have here a helium. Well, remember before, we also said that our helium is an alpha particle. So helium atom is an alpha particle. And so this atom is found on the product side. So we know that we have alpha decay. Let's make that neater. All right, so our last one, we have cobalt 60 that, and we end up with nickel 60, but I've got two different particles that are produced here on the end. Well, is that possible? Sure it is. Sometimes beta decay or positron emission is also, um, also occurs with the release of high energy gamma rays. So what type of decay do we have here? We've got that E minus one, which we know is a beta particle. So we've got beta and this gamma. So we have beta and gamma. Oh, that, that's not a good Y. Beta and gamma decay. Now we'll practice balancing these nuclear equations. I apologize, the writing is kind of small. Um, all right, so we've got radon 266. I'll write it larger because it's kind of tiny. Um, and we have a alpha particle that's produced. And we need to know what is our daughter nuclide. So how do we balance nuclear equations? Well. 
to me, it's simpler than balancing chemical equations because we're really just making sure that the numbers are the same. So we have to look at our, our mass numbers and our atomic numbers. And that's also the charge. So because we have a conservation of mass, we have to have the same number of protons and neutrons on the left and right hand side of the periodic, not periodic table, <laughs> left side of our equation. So how do we balance this out? Well, we have to add up, so our, so over here on our um, reactant side, our mass number is, I'll write this over, oh, let's write it in here. Our mass number is 226. And on our reactant side, we've got four plus something. Well, we have to have equal mass numbers and equal atomic numbers on both sides. So, well, what do I need? I need 222 in order to equal to 226. So my new particle has a mass number of 222. And now we need to take a look at our atomic number and charge. Well, I've got 88 on one side, on my reactant side, and then I've got two on my product side. So once again, they have to be equal. So what added to two can give me 88? It's 86. So now we have an atomic number of 86. What do you do? You look on your trusty periodic table for the atomic number of 86, and we end up with radon. All right, so what type of nuclear reaction did we have? Well, we have this helium down here, which we also know is what? It is a, an alpha particle, so this is alpha decay. So this is um, mass number, and this is atomic number. All right, let's take a look at the second one. We've got potassium 37, has atomic number of 19, and this equation says that we end up with a beta particle. And we need to figure out what is our daughter nuclide. Well, 37 and zero, we have to equal on both sides. So we know that our atomic number is gonna be 37. And we've got 19 and minus one. Minus one plus what will give us 19? Correct, 20. So go to your periodic table. What has uh, an atomic number of 20? Calcium. So notice we have what kind of particle over here on this side? This is a beta particle, so we have beta decay. Beta, my pen is upside down. All right, let's take a look at this next problem. Technician 99 and We have a what kind of particle over there on the end? Beta particle. So once again, we need to balance out both sides. We've got a 99 for our mass number, and we've got a zero. So to be equal on both sides, our new mass number for our daughter nuclide is going to be 99. Well, we've got 43 as our atomic number. And then I've got a negative nine, I'm, I'm sorry, a negative one on my product side. So negative one plus what is gonna give me 43? It's gonna be 44. When you look on your trusty periodic table, this is RU or ruthenium. And once again, we have what kind of decay? You are so smart, beta decay. All right, two more to go. Okay, well, here we need to find out what is our reactant nucleus. 
So here it says that we, we have an alpha particle. We have an alpha particle and a thallium-208 nucleus. Two hundred eight nucleus, and we need to know what was our starting material. All right. Well, our reactant side, we've got four plus two hundred eight, which is going to give us two hundred and twelve. And if we take a look at our helium, we've got two in our uh, atomic number, and we've got eighty one for thallium. We add those together, we get 83. Now we look on our trusty periodic table, and we end up with bismuth. What do we have as our particle, as our product um, for our decay? Well, remember this helium is also an alpha particle, so we can say that that is alpha. Okay. All right, last problem, folks. We've got beryllium 9 plus, hey, what's this? Hydrogen 1, 1. What did we say that was again? That's a proton. So what's going on? We've got a particle plus a nucleus. There's something going on here. Um, is this a natural decay? It's not a natural decay because when something decays, it's just one element that breaks down into a particle and some new element. Here we have an element plus a particle that is going to give us something new. So this is a what type of reaction? Let's write this part down first. This is a bombardment. Bombardment or transmutation. But we also notice that we end up with a particle as well. And that particle is a what, folks? Let's go ahead and put our answer here. It's an alpha particle. So what happened? There's a bombardment with a proton that causes an element to decay and give off an alpha particle. So let's figure out what our daughter nuclide is after this reaction. All right, so we've got nine and one in our atomic number. So that gives us 10 on the product side, but we have a four here on our reactant side. So that leaves us with what? Four plus what gives us 10? It's gonna be a six. And we've got four in the atomic number for beryllium and a one for hydrogen that gives us five. On our, pro on our reactant side, and helium has two. So two plus what gives us five? Three. And we look on our trusty periodic table, and we get lithium. Lithium-6 as our daughter nuclide. All right? And here we have our alpha particle. OK? And notice here that we were bombarded with a proton. So our bombardment with a, with a proton. All right? OK. Sometimes we have uh, a type of reaction where we want to know what particle is actually used to produce this new element. So if we take copper 64 and we bombard it with some particle, we can end up with nickel 64. Well, remember, this is just like balancing equation, right? Whenever you want to find out what that particle is. So notice for our atomic numbers, we both have, we have 64 on both sides. So that means that they're already equal, so we're going to have zero for our atomic mass. Well, we've got a 29 on the copper and a 28 on the nickel. Well, 29, 
we have to have what? A plus one or a minus one to get to 28. Well, we need a minus one. Well, the only particle that has a zero mass and a negative one charge is going to be an electron or a beta particle. So I can write this like this as well. Right? So what particle was used to actually bombard the original nucleus? A beta particle. Or All right, let's take a look at the next problem. We start off with argon-40, and we end up releasing a, nu a neutron, and we end up with potassium-40 as well. Hmm. Okay. Well, remember, we have to add up everything on both sides and make sure that they're equal. If we look on our reactant side, we've got, four, we've got a 1 in our atomic mass and a 40. So 40 plus 1 gives us 41. And in order for us to have balanced uh, equation, that means I'm, my mass number has got to be a 1 for my particle. 0 plus 19 gives us 19. So if I, only, if I have 18 over here, then that means I need a plus 1. Well, the only particle that has a mass of 1 and a charge of 1, is it a positron? Not a positron because it doesn't have any mass. So this is going to be, I'll put it as a P, which can also be written like this, which is a what, folks? A proton. 